All right, this is definitely something different than I've ever previously done, but <clears throat> when I saw uh, this this paper, I just you know wanted to do it. So basically, um, as you might be able to discern from the title, um, this is about the recently published paper, Reward is Enough. Well, I shouldn't say recently published. Um, it, it's not, it's recently, recently pre-printed, so it's, it's not officially published, I don't think, yet. Um, but the, the key idea here, um, and, and what I'm going to be discussing is basically, I wouldn't say I'm going to be arguing in opposition to this work, um, but in a certain sense I will, but I'll, I'll be more arguing that um, it's not a substantial or I guess my counter thesis would be that it's that this reward is enough hypothesis is not a meaningful or useful description of the world from a philosophical, cognitive, or computational perspective. Um, and I, I originally, funnily enough, as soon as this paper came out, I, I saw it pretty much instantly just because I happened to be perusing, um, you know, the publications or preprints or whatever um, before I mean it, it went big on Twitter and Reddit and stuff and and I was actually thinking as soon as it came out I read it, I was thinking I should like I should write an archive paper saying reward is not enough um, and so you're probably wondering uh, and, and actually I'll, I'll link some of the reddit that's below and one of them is actually titled reward is not enough so I guess I'm not really that clever um, <laughs> other people thought of that title too but <clears throat> Um, so you're pro I should probably address why I didn't do it because I, I, after this, I have no intention of, of making the, um, of making, making the archive paper. And that's for a variety of reasons, mainly because, um, what I have to say isn't really an opposition to this, this paper. It's more like, like it would be like a one page summary sort of is like what, what it's not worthwhile. Right. And, and the second reason is because I, I don't want to write it. That's uh, that's a decent amount of work and compiling all that. And I, I, I just don't have any reason to really do that. Um, and the third reason is also because um, it may not be in, you know, my best interest to, you know, so publicly go against these these big organizations i don't know if you i mean we've all seen the uh the the interactions between big universities and and companies and and the anonymous reviewers on twitter and, and reddit and stuff so i don't know <laughs> if you see how they treat anonymous people i don't know if you want to be non-anonymous um and so and so a paper would sort of do that i mean not that this isn't you know it's clear who, who's saying this but it's uh it's less publicized, I guess. No one's, none of them are gonna at all know that I did this in, in some sense. Um, so yeah, we can just uh, get into it, I guess. Sort of outlining. This is gonna be probably short. I might just have the paper. I don't have any slides or anything. Um, I don't know where the paper is publicly available because this is a a paid journal. Um, there was someone, uh, a prominent. PhD student, I want to say at Berkeley, was sharing a, uh, um, a Google Drive that that had it, um, and it, it wasn't like that. Like the the people, I from what I could understand, approved of it, so it wasn't like piracy. But um, that that's where I got it. So I, I don't know if I'll be able to link the the paper, but um, yeah, getting right into it. Um, I'm just going to skip over parts, right? So basically, introduction, you know, obviously motivation is important. And basically, I just want to say, first of all, I'm basically going to skip the entire reinforcement learning problem. I'm going to assume that you know the gist of RL. I will touch on it briefly. But the first thing I want to jump to is right here. And this is, oh, right. I need to do that. There we go. This is the, the key thing. Maybe I should zoom in a little right, right here. This is sort of 
what the paper is saying and, and all that it's saying is. So the hypothesis, the quote unquote reward is enough hypothesis says that intelligence and its associated abilities can be understood as subserving. And in this case, you know, if you're like, what's the exact definition of subserving is to help to further or promote. So you could say that intelligence and associated abilities can be understood as helping and further supporting the maximization of reward by an agent acting in its environment. And so the key issue that, that I take here, well, I shouldn't say this by itself is whatever, right? That's a hypothesis you can have. And so they'll explain it. I have no problem with thinking of agents and environments, right? You can think of humans or squirrels or computers, right? As agents in environment, that's fine. That's a fine way of understanding the, the world. Um, and that's justifiable. And in fact, this, I, the way it's presented right here, I, I have no inherent problems with this. Um, it's an argument that can certainly be made. But the first question, right, that I immediately had when um, reading this paper was, what is reward? Right? What does that mean? That's not a, a well-defined term. Everyone has a different definition, right? Um, do, like reward, if you like, if I just Google the definition, right, if I do define reward, it's going to give me the Merriam-Webster definition, right, which is a thing given in recognition of one service or a fair and good or fair return for good or bad behavior, a sum offered. Yeah, so there's there's all these um terms, right, that cover the, the gist of it. But what does it mean in this context is, is a real um, problem, because this is essentially a quasi cognitive science paper and then cognitive science and philosophy, right? The definition of terms is really important when there's nuances that can be changed. So <clears throat> what is reward in this sense? And so the only time here, I don't know if you can see me control finding something. Ah, there we go. So you can see these are all the times reward is mentioned. I'm just scrolling through it. I'm not going to go through. But long story short, the only time, and I did read this a while ago, so if someone challenges me, you might be correct. The only time reward is defined, right? Now, there's examples of rewards. Like resort, reward is a category of things. And they give examples for, so like right here, <clears throat> the reward um, is like feeling full or whatever, right? That That's an example of the category of rewards. But if we go back here, we can see that as defined in this 2.4 section, the rewards are a special scale or observation, R sub T, emitted at every time set T by a reward signal in the environment that provides an instantaneous measure of progress towards a goal. So that's not a particularly um, controversial <clears throat> um, ch challenge or definition, I should say, of, of reward. And you can say, they can say a lot of goals can be represented by rewards. You can do dense reward functions. You can have sparse reward functions. Now, all sorts of things can be represented. But, right, the definition of a reward is um, anything can be a reward. And that, that's not just me being hyperbolic, right? Um, it's a observation, right? And since we observe the world and presumably agents observe the environment or get information about an environment. Anything can be said to be a reward, right? You could say, you know, if you have your squirrel, right? Hunting around, you could have hunger be a reward. You could have, um, you know, reproduction passing on its genes be a reward. You could have, um, surviving every day be a reward. You could be surviving every day after reproduction be a negative reward. Anything that exists can be represented by a reward. And this sort of gets to the crux of what I think is, is the issue here. And that's, this doesn't offer anything new. So when you're looking at this intelligence, so they say, they give it a, a bunch of examples, reward is enough for this and this and this, right? Reward in most of these situations, essentially, right, this hypothesis essentially just becomes sort of the evolutionary you know, theory, basically, right? You're saying it, that's if your reward is, um, you know, passing on genes, or if your reward is surviving, right? Then 
then it's going to be uh, the forces, there's going to be selection pressures on your agent, right? So if your agent is, is maladapted to an environment, there's going to be selection pressures to push it. You know, you can think of the canonical example of Darwin's finches having different size beaks, right? That's the, uh, that's the reward, right, of being able to eat food that uh, affected the, the shape of, of their beaks. And so in this sense, it's, it's almost, it, it is too general when you can just say this reward can be anything. It could be, and, and, and that is sort of the argued to be a strength is that it can express a wide variety of goals, but that's not really meaningful, right? If it can be anything, then it sort of loses it, its, its value. It's also from a scientific perspective, not that this is sort of should be thought of as the only way to do science or even the best philosophy of science, but it's a commonly understood and at least tentatively accepted idea, um, although there's a lot of problems, but the idea of falsification, right? Your hypothesis has to be falsifiable. Um, and it doesn't have to be. It's not the only way to do science. That's just what Karl Popper said. Um, but th this is... Um, broad enough that it's completely unfalsifiable, right? If you're like, if you think of some sort of general theory of science, like the theory of relativity, right? You could say, Einstein could have said, look, look at the stars and look how light curves around them, right? Because depending on, you know, the, the curvature of, of the space time, um, the, the, the light will look different than what Newtonian mechanics suggests. And, you know, they, they, you, we can do that experiment now and we can you know see that that's right but if if you're like okay and if it doesn't like follow according to my hypothesis and, and bend then my my theory's wrong and so you can you can say okay if this happens it's, it's not correct um, but the problem is there's nothing here that you could ever um, ever falsify right you could say you could conceive of any situation right? You could say, hey, look, get, get, think in your head of any example where it seems like it's minimizing a reward or intuitively, right, where it's shortening its lifespan. You could say, if we think from some sort of, you know, reproductive standpoint, right, you could say um, the, this, the sedentary lifestyle of, of many modern humans is, is um, minimizing the, the reward, right, because if the reward is propagating your genes, if the reward is living longer, um, then, then this is not conducive to it, right? If you see, if you say that, hey, wait, you know, it's good for you, you live longer, you, your health outcomes and the health outcomes of your children are, are better with an active lifestyle, then, then this seems like a minimization of a reward. But then you can simply change the reward and you say, well, it's actually maximizing the reward of some sort of hedonistic pleasure, right? There's, there's anything that it could be understood to be reward, so this can fit any situation. There's no situation in the world that this hypothesis couldn't fit in, which therefore makes it unfalsifiable. Now, that's not a huge problem. Um, that might be a challenge for some scientific um, communities, but you could say, well, this isn't meant to be some sort of provable or disprovable hypothesis. This is meant to be a framework through which the world and com computational science can be evaluated. But it also doesn't make it particularly effective, right? If it's so general that everything fits into this category, then how are we ever going to make... It doesn't aid anything to the computer science, right? If you're like, okay, I want to make something that's... Don't think AGI, but think somewhat closer to human-level intelligence. Maybe you want to do more general, right? Instead of having, you know human level intelligence, maybe just have an AI that can do more things at, at a decent level. And so then you have to think about, well, what reward do I give it, right? That's always the challenge. And, and, and unless there's some sort of biological inspiration to your computing system, right, you have to give it a, some sort of reward or else the, these, there's no, in, in a sense, there's no selection pressures. So, so in one sense, right, it's it's not very good because it, it's not a particularly scientifically useful hypothesis. It also 
um, kind of depending on what you interpret it as is is in some sense just a rehashing of some sort of evolutionary biology right if you're just saying instead of reward intelligence and associated abilities can under be understood as subserving of subserving the selection pressures of an environment right then that's just um you know natural selection that's that's just evolution and so then it's like well that's nothing new um but then if you're thinking well this is just in terms of humanity right if you think of human level intelligence only um then you can think of like well think of rewards in life like um uh, like if you are good um you get a medal or if you're bad right you go to jail and so you could say you know we we develop these societies based off of these rewards but then there's so many conflicting rewards in, in human society that it's not a particularly effective um Um, you know, uh, hypothesis, especially if you consider some sort of, um, you know, existentialist perspective, right? If we have no intrinsic purpose in life, if there's no, um, you know, single reason we exist, um, there's no meaning, right, in, in, in our existence, then we define our own rewards. And that's the whole, you know, philosophy there is how do we make meaning in a inherently meaningless um, existence and so then it's like self-defined reward you can define whatever you want um, to be your reward and so then it doesn't um, it doesn't really fit into this conceptualization of, of reward as simply a scale or observation because it also when you're thinking of scale or observations right if we go up here um, you can think of weighted combinations of objectives but then um, it's then there's reward processing that is done by by humans and by animals right because we weight objectives and so then it's not the reward signal doesn't exist in the environment it's the human interpretation um, of the reward system and so you know they go through here right and they show look if the reward is let's consider just an example um what's the best example yeah here's the best example perception right reward is enough for per perception this is an example that i talked about earlier right how this is basically just evolution because if um early on um uh in you know medieval and uh, enlightenment times a common argument for you know the the creator or um uh, some sort of existence of God was the argument of from design or of design. And it's the, the, the canonical example in those times was look at the eye. And, you know, back then they could still dissect things, even if they didn't have the technology that we have to look um, microscopically at the, at the complexities of the eye. But they, you know, you still knew that the eye was insanely complex. And they said, look, this, this is too complex. Look at everything in the world. How could this complex, perfectly attuned system arise it's it's impossible so therefore it must have been created by you know god and that was a common argument <clears throat> it's now generally even among um uh, religious philosophy except um recognize that it is possible um for for these eyes and ears and kidneys to to uh, arise over millions and millions and millions of years due to natural selection and evolution um and so this is sort of an example right we're saying reward is enough for perception that's sort of like basically what you know evolution is enough for perception is you know sort of the same idea here and so it's not really adding anything new this this formulation here doesn't add anything new right actions and observations okay that you can fit the world into this paradigm doesn't mean a lot it doesn't mean it's right or applicable or good it just means it's possible and here we can think of social intelligence right and this sort of connects to what i was talking about earlier about rewards as understanding and what i thought the first time i saw this was the reward is some sort of utility function right um and bentham's original writing he had like 
seven aspects that come into play, like the length, the duration, that's the same thing as like the length, the severity, the number of effects. I, I don't remember all of them. I, I haven't read that since, you know, my intro to philosophy class. Um, but, but there's a, you know, in, in the sense of a philosophical utility function, um, the, there's the idea of that's enough to develop, you know, social existence. And this is essentially what this section is just saying. And so it's sort of um, offering another paradigm in which this could be, this, all these different frameworks could fit in, but it's not particularly useful, right? So if we go down, they say, reward is enough for yada, 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 all of that, right? <clears throat> Um, yeah, yeah, so they, they do mention here which reward signal. And so the desire to, yeah, and so this is also an example of like scale rewards in the real world. What does that mean, right? Obviously, there's a numerical representation of, you know, let's suppose the little... Um, we must assume right back to the you know primordial soup, right? And the little you know, single cellular organisms that are down there that are surviving, the ones that are like, hey, if I reproduce more, or if I do binary fission, or what, however they reproduce more, then that's better, and I have better chance of you know propagating my genes, and so that's good. And so, in that sense, that's a reward, right? Would be to do more, um asexual reproduction, right? That would be a reward. But if you're then thinking, well, how's that scale work, right? You, I can mathematically represent the DNA or RNA or whatever in some sort of mathematical framework. I can write down all the chemistry. I can write the Hamiltonian of the whole system and whatever. But that doesn't really numerically um, get considered by the agent, right? The agent has no numerical processing and in some sense numbers didn't you know don't exist to bacteria um, there's no there's no numbers in a bacterial world because there's no you know cognition in, in a bacterial world um, and so it, in that sense it doesn't make sense to have a scalar observation there are no scalars there are no numbers there is no math to a bacteria to a little bacteria or a, some sort of single cellular organism. So like that we can look at it now and say, okay, that's, you know, we can say, oh, it's getting a plus one reward every time it reproduces. Um, that's not really accurate. Um, and, and so there's no, there's, there's sort of right, a disconnect, right? Between this computational framework of scale or rewards, which we can feed into some sort of computer that works with numbers and humanity and and life in general, which doesn't work with numbers. I mean, humanity does, but but even with with um, humanity, right? If you consider learned behaviors of like a baby, and it's saying, "Oh, I can learn to communicate," when I, I can incentivize language learning in babies because you know the more they communicate, the more food or attention they can get, right? That's a reward. But the problem is, there's no even in humanity, right, they, they don't process that as a number because they don't even know what numbers are. So there's no scalar observation. There's just pain or pleasure that exists in that baby's mind. And so there, there's this chat, there's, there's a problem too of what even the reward as defined, how general it is, um, is not particularly useful. And so, yeah, this is, this is sort of, um, this is why I say it's sort of weird in the sense that this is a lot of people uh, in a Twitter and, and on a Discord server and stuff that I'm in were saying this isn't, you're reading this you know, too much as a scientific or as a computational paper. And really it's not, it's a cognitive science paper. And I, for one, you know, appreciate cognitive science papers as I am very, I very much appreciate philosophy and and I, I love, I would love to see more philosophy of, of you know, AI and machine learning, especially in contemporary machine learning, um, um, arise because it's, it seems like every time someone tries to do that, the machine learning 
community or at least the loudest voices in it get very mad at them for trying to to bring anything critical thinking wise into their into their field but uh but i don't think this is particularly useful um as a as a philosophical paper or a cognitive science paper as you can see from the especially from the discussion right you're thinking about it purely from a computational standpoint and and, and trying to make it work in in a sort of general sense but it it doesn't really right and this is a now, I'm not disagreeing with these key points, right? Reward is enough. The problem is that reward can be defined to, to be enough for, if it's enough for anything, right? Um, there, there's the same problem of it's enough for itself and its opposite. It's, but I, I won't get into that whole thread right now. Um, the main critique is just that the reward as defined in this paper is not really applicable to biological life and is far too general to be meaningful to any computational person and is far from being novel to any philosophical person. And so it's not a particularly useful framework, right? It's clearly written to some hybrid community. They introduce RL, right? If even a basic ML person, like, like I'm, I'm not an RL expert, but even like this, this is like super RL 101. This is something that like, if you even took an ML class and had one day of RL, this is what you would learn. Um, and so it's, so it's clearly not written to computational people, but then down here, right? If you're not a computational person, you're never going to ask questions like offline learning. Um, you're never going to ask questions about, um, the, unsupervised learning i saw that somewhere but uh, one last thing i want to touch on is right here um they mentioned evolution what other things uh if i just do this section right here i think it's to right here so evolution can be absurd at an abstract level as maximizing fitness as measured by you know in our framework so basically right evolution is as i said just the, the maximization of fitness or of um the environmental and maximization of adaptation to environmental selection pressures or social selection. Um, and so, and so they can say artificial intelligence may be designed with other goals, right? They, the reward is more general than just reproductive success. And so in some sense, right, this is the only point, and this could have been an interesting thread right here. I mean, it's been somewhat developed philosophically, right? But if you consider something like um, some sort of materials perspective or some sort of selfish gene, right? Richard Dawkins' selfish gene, where as opposed to something like E.O. Wilson's sociobiology, um, you can see two different positions on how evolution even works, right? And so in, in some sense, you know, to, to someone looking at from this genetic perspective, it's not about reproductive success, it's about genetic success, right? And you can think of, I'm really pulling, <laughs> pulling hard on, on, my, on my limited biology knowledge here, but uh, you can think of how certain animals, um, there's a term for this, and this is, I apologize that I really do not know enough about biology to, to really be commenting on this, but there's a term for what this is called but basically some some animals right will give up they won't have any kids they'll simply help um raise the children of their siblings and so you might be thinking that doesn't make any sense from a reproductive success standpoint that's literally the worst thing you could do from a reproductive success standpoint but from a genetic standpoint if your sibling has effectively one half of your genes then if you help them if you say hey if i have kids and i'm only going to have one kid then my genes only get passed on in a sense once. But if I help my my you know sibling and and the siblings can have ten kids, even though those ten kids are you know a diluted form, even though each one of them only might have a quarter of my genes, now that's effectively the same genetic material being passed on of mine, right? If you have ten kids, ten times one fourth, now you're having like that would be equivalent sort of to me having two and a half kids. And so you can see that it's not just even within evolution, it's not just about 
reproductive success. And there is a thread here, right, of saying how do these genetic versus sociobiologic or higher sort of emergent property um, theories of evolution and philosophy of of humanity even and and how you know society developed from an evolutionary perspective how do these fit in with a computational perspective and that's an interesting question and, and certainly worth exploring it probably has i'm not an expert in the area um but this is not what what the paper ended up being and and, and in some sense that's unfortunate and so they you can see that they sort of just go up from evolution and go up from more general things. And, and really, this is sort of a, what this is. It's just sort of a, a misunderstanding of um, evolution. Also, in the sense that uh, there is no goal, right? It's it's a, there's random processes, but that's OK. Um, going back to it, right, we can we can end on this note, which is that essentially what this is saying is that it's not just enough for intelligence, right? So it's enough for all, it's enough for anything, right? Associated abilities, perception is not, I mean, I guess it's an associated ability, but life, right? This is really what it is. And you can see from their examples, right? Knowledge, learning, perception. I mean, if you, if you define intelligence so broad to include all of that, then it's basically just life, right? And so that can be understood as subserving the maximization of reward. And reward here is any anything that impacts life, right? It's, it could be anything. That's the whole point, right? It could be anything. So what is this saying? If I rephrase this, life is the can be understood as resulting or subserving doesn't make as much sense here, but as, as stemming from the processes that impact it, right? That's basically what this is saying. If we consider the definition of reward of being general and intelligence and associated abilities basically being made up of life. And so what this is really, you can sort of run with this in two ways. It's basically just nothing new in some sort of materialist, physicalist perspective, right? There's just the maximization of reward is the physical processes that go on or right this is so general right you can represent any reward in the world right as some sort of molecular atomistic interactions right that's all reward is if we zoom out a little because that's it's not specific to anything that's all any reward could be represented as interactions chemical physical interactions and so then it's some sort of right if if it's just saying everything comes from this physical interactions and it's basically just some sort of physicalist perspective. Um, you could also just understand this as some sort of cause and effect as just saying um, this, this general framework simply is, is a fancy way of rewriting causality because it's so general. Um, you could also consider it as um, some sort of determinism, but I won't talk much on that thread either. And so, and so that's um, sort of a disjoint overview of, of why I don't particularly agree. I don't want to say I disagree with this paper because I'm not saying reward is not enough for this. That's not really my thesis, right? Um, I'm not saying reward is not enough for language. I'm saying this framework is not meaningful. Um, and so it, it's, it's sort of that's sort of why I didn't didn't write a response paper, but I think that's pretty much. You can see this section also indicates it's more to a uh, compute people, but anyway, um, that's pretty much all I guess I have to say. Not really, um, maybe super well thought out. I kind of just sat down and and wrote and and spoke this out, but. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. Um, this is definitely different than usual. Not something I probably will do a lot, um, unless there's high demand for philosophical videos. But which I would love to do. But yeah, I guess that's that's it.